Jay, they're all they're all yours. And uh, you know, if they have all followed your TikToks, they know that you're occupying your time pretty well. So thanks thanks guys and stay safe. Have a good one, coach. Okay, thank you. We're going to transition over to Georgie. We'll do just like we did for Coach. Please stay, say your name and who you're with so uh, Georgie knows who the question's coming from, and let's get started. Hey, Georgie, Jim Cotter, Orange Blue News. Through all this, how you been handling yourself, and uh, have you heard from your family back home, and are they safe there? Hey, how you doing? Um, absolutely. I mean, I talk to my family every single day. Um that's how we get through it. We get through it together. Even though we're not together right now at the moment, we're not in the same location. We try to call each other as much as we can. We call each other two, three times a day. And uh, just try to stay positive every single day, you know, because uh, right now, not a lot of things that we know what will happen in the future. So we can't plan on anything. We don't know what to do. So what we are trying to do right now is just go day by day. What well, is today? What we can do? You know, wake up, maybe work out, maybe make a funny video or something, and uh, then you know, just have faith that everything will get back together. But how we've been getting through is just having a positive mindset through all this and calling each other every day. You know. Okay, before we take the next question, I'll remind, if you're not asking a question, please have your phone on mute. Someone either has it right by their chin or something that's causing a lot of background noise for us. So for broadcast quality, that would very help if we could go on mute when you're not asking. Continue. Hello? Um, hey, Georgie, it's Scott Beatty, WDWS. Uh, what have you been trying to do to just stay in shape? Is it um, uh, is it a big challenge for you to uh, to do that on your own, or uh, a lot of discipline, or is it something you are kind of gravitating towards pretty easy? I mean, we had a call yesterday with Coach Ledge and all the coaches and stuff, and um, we definitely we already have a little uh, plan from Coach Ledge that we he put on the app that he uh, told us to download, so we have that and we have daily workouts. Monday through Friday, I think, and uh, Saturday, Sunday is off. That will definitely help us to uh, stay in state. Also, you got to understand it's so different being in the ba- basketball shape because you're not on the court working out and uh, anything, you know. And so it's definitely a different type of being in shape. Uh, but um, we definitely will do uh, everything possible to stay in the best physical shape as we can and also. Um, just being prepared mentally for whatever it's like, you know. But, yeah, that's it pretty much. Hey, Georgie, this is Gavin Good with the Peoria Journal Star. Um, obviously, you're, you're still on campus and, and in the state. Um, did you ever think about going home or, or try to go home? I know uh, Brad said it was really a, a tough situation to where you maybe couldn't even get a flight home if you did try. Yeah. Um, they were definitely hard to get, even get flight if I could try. And uh, also, they announced how Europe closed the borders, and uh, it would be possible, but it was, um, I don't know, it would be a risk to be quarantined maybe for uh, for a month in a hotel or something. I definitely don't want to take that risk. And also, when the United States closed, uh, closed their borders, then I would definitely not know when they will open back up. So if I go home and things go back to normal, um, here, I don't know, in summer or whatever, and we start summer workouts, uh, I would not be able to come back. It would be really hard. So it was just the safest thing to do. I feel like to stay here. Also, I'm really, really isolated from everybody because there's not a lot of people on campus or around here. So I'm pretty isolated. They're isolated. They're in the office. So uh, overall, it was just the safer, the safest decision. But I definitely want to be uh, back home with my family, to be honest. Is it is it tough to be kind of, you know, on your own here? I know you have, like, a support system on campus, but pretty much everyone else is away, too, as you said. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously, as I said, I want to be with my family. Um, that's a normal thing, I think. Uh, in tough time, I guess everybody's with their family, staying tight and trying to stay healthy and uh, just be together because it's way easier to go through anything when you're with somebody, when you're together, obviously, family. But um, I can't 
So it's it will it is safer to see to be here. So um I gotta have a right approach to this and just uh still be positive about it, you know. I can't change anything at the moment. So all I can control is uh just have faith and be positive about how the situation is for me and my family. Sure, dude. This is Alex Bussey from the Daily Line. I know you don't work directly with Shane Coleman, but what's your relationship with him, and why do you guys seem to gravitate towards him and have such a good relationship with him? <laughs> oh, my man, Chin. Chin. Um, I mean, Chin is just a, such a personality. He got, I mean, I think he got this young type of personality that we have, uh, you know, you know, all the coaches, all the coaches that we have are definitely characters, and they have their personality stuff. But this Chin is just like, I don't know. He just uh, really funny. He got really funny personality outside the court, uh, obviously. When we are just hanging out, you know, either having breakfast after practice or just uh, just hanging out throughout the day. You know, guys are in the gym all day, and uh, we just crack jokes with Chin or have an argument, and uh, um, it's just really funny how it just happens naturally, you know. Hey, Georgie, this is Scott Ritchie from the News Gazette. Um, I guess maybe besides online classes and, you know, staying in shape, how are you spending your days um, in semi-isolation, I guess? I mean, as you mentioned, I do homework, and uh, that's the first thing I always, I usually have a meeting at 10 o'clock. Meeting is funny, but it's a meeting at 10 o'clock, academic meeting at 10, and then, uh, I work out a little bit, whatever I can do, and then I also make funny videos on TikTok. I've done a couple. I'm working on a couple ways. I have to be honest. Um, also, I just listen to music, and also uh, skill is also to relax. I learned, you know, it's uh, I haven't done a lot of relaxing in my past life, to be honest, in general. And now I can just sit down, also, and I can just relax, you know, just think about stuff or just listen to music and just. Uh, try to not think about anything and just relax my body, relax my mind, and uh, just go with uh, with the flow, you know? And hey, you again. Were to master of walking on your hands. Um, how are you doing in that regard? Say that again, Scott. That? There were, there were... Hello. Scott, can you please repeat that? There were two of you talking at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Georgie, uh, Brad said that you've been – you're trying to master walking on your hands. Uh, have you gotten oh, yeah. that down yet? <laughs> well, where's the status of that? Yeah, so I just started doing it. I I was able to do it when I was uh, when I was a kid, when I was uh, like ten years old. But then I just um, I couldn't do it anymore recently now, and uh, I just started doing it at the house. And my first goal was to break five seconds standing on my hands. I broke it. And then it was ten seconds. And I broke that, and now I just try to go longer than 10 seconds. But I can stand on my hands for 10 seconds now. It's just uh, something that I just uh, started doing. Actually, I was cleaning my apartment, and I moved the couches and stuff. There was a lot of uh, a lot of room in the uh, living room, and I just started doing it because it was, like, empty. And I don't know. Um, now I can stand on my hands for 10 seconds, I guess. Stuff that just happens in the house when you are when you're quarantined, you know. Hey, Georgie, it's Rob McCauley. Hey, Can I uh, ask how Lolly and David are doing, and do you get to talk to them every day? Um, yeah, I mean, the best thing right now is, um, to be honest, the phones that we have and the Wi-Fi and everything, because if I wouldn't have that, it would be definitely way, way harder. I talk to them every single day. We, like, FaceTime, there's WhatsApp, there's different apps you can um, talk with, and um, we talk every single day with FaceTime, just talk about different things, maybe memories, and they are doing the same as I am, you know, I think everybody's doing pretty much the same thing, just trying to stay at home, and uh, they're just trying to stay healthy and get through this, you know, and I think every pretty much everybody's doing the same thing in that, uh, in that case, everybody's just trying to stay at home, so they are doing the same thing, they're great, my mom is really good cook, to be honest, so my brother has way better food than I have here, but, uh, they're doing well. This is everybody else, I think. Hey, Georgie, it's Gatton again. Um, I don't know if you think of yourself this way, but it seems like a lot of Illini fans um, really like your creativity and, you know, your sense of fun. Um, I was just wondering if you have any advice or a message for people on, you know, things to do to pass the time and, and just making the most of all this stuff. 
I mean, I definitely have a message because um, it was crazy the first couple of days and started, and then, oh, my God, I don't have anything in place for the future and this and that. And, um, it was the same for everybody, I think. But then I was saying that, and I was just thinking, why are we rushing this whole entire time? You know, like, oh, I'm going to rush to practice, to practice, and then I'm going to rush to class to get good grades to be able to play. And then I'm playing because I'm practicing. We're just rushing the whole entire time. And I was able to just sit down and relax at this moment, you know, because we can do a lot of things right now anyway. We cannot, I don't know, go out, practice, work, get better, do more, more, more. We cannot do all those things. So I would just tell people just to try to, it's a skill as well, I think, just trying to sit down and relax. Think about stuff. Think about their own, um, their own, I don't know how to explain it. Their own soul, their themselves, what they're living for, why, what really matters, what doesn't matter, you know. And um, maybe some people don't know their families well enough. Get to know them like to the most. I know pretty much every little detail about my brother, my mom, or my grandparents. So um, just spend time with your family, try to relax, and uh, let the time pass. And I think uh, time will be able to take care of all of it. Yeah, that's my man for people, I think. Hey, Georgie, this is Paul Banks of the Sports Bank. I saw your Instagram from about 10 days ago where you're working on your post moves in quarantine. And my question is, where did you – yeah, it was really enjoyable. It was really funny. And I guess, did you get the background music from TikTok, or why did you choose that music? That made it really entertaining. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you for your compliment. I was just, yeah, I was just spending time on TikTok and that song came on and I'm, I really just liked it. I don't know, I just liked the sound and then I started playing the sound and after I started playing the sound, I saw a basketball laying on the floor and I picked it up and I just started moving with it and then it just randomly, that was thought, such a random video to be honest. So it just randomly happened. I just liked the song from the TikTok and then I saw a ball and I just started moving to it. It was great though. It, I think it, it was a pretty fun video as well. And then kind of as a follow-up to that, what what advice would you give to people that keep sense of humor and keep laughing during very trying and strange times like these? I mean, um, what else, I mean, what else really can you do at this time? You know, like, one, there's a couple of facts, you know, fact is you should not leave the house and you are at the house. So what you can, what can you do at the house? You know, like, should you be worrying the whole time watching those news and CNN and all that stuff and that even plays with your head even more? Or you can make a choice and just use this time to relax. Relax your body, relax your mind, and just have sense of humor a little bit. You can still watch something, joke with, if you have family, if you have family at the house. I'm all by myself. I'm still trying to have fun, you know, making those videos, making people laugh, interact with people. And it's way easier then, you know, time passes. You are laughing at a great time, and then if you if you are able to get through adversity like this with smile and with uh, with some humor, I think it's great. It's a great thing to do. So I encourage everybody to do that. It, it doesn't have to be making videos or stuff. It can be drawing stuff. You know, it can be I don't know, maybe meditation. I don't know. There's so many things you can do, and uh, I encourage people to get out of their comfort zones and really try to do something that that will influence them positively. Great advice. Thanks, Georgie. Yeah. Hey, Georgie, this is Joey Wagner with the Decatur Herald Review. You, you mentioned taking all this time to relax and said you had never had a chance to really relax like this before. Was it a challenge to, to finally relax, given that you're so used to going, going, going all the time? It is. It was really, it has been really, really a challenge for me. And to encourage me was my brother to do this, you know. It was, uh, after the first two days, as I mentioned, it was pretty crazy to be just at home the whole entire time. And uh, my brother told me, hey, like, just sit down on your couch and just, like, relax a little bit. Um, and I was listening to him. I'm like, okay. And um, I felt uncomfortable because, like, I just haven't done it in so long. Oh, you always running, you know. I'm running to practice, too. And then after that, I'm running to the class, and then I'm running to my learning specialist, and then I'm running to, you know, go work out again, put extra work in, then run to get food, and then you rush to get home to hang out with your friends or whatever. You're always rushing, always fast. And 
never really get time, real time, just to sit down and relax and just not think about anything. It has no purpose, but sometimes you just need it to sit down and relax. And my brother encouraged me to do that. And um, I really, too, like I'm thinking probably never in my life since I started doing a little more uh, grown stuff than just being a kid in school. Um, I never really had time to do that. And now it's time, and now you got to use this time to do that, I think. It might be different for some people, but I definitely think it's uh, that's what it is for me personally. Hey, Georgie, it's Anthony from the Champagne Room. How do you feel after hearing about some of your classmates like Alan Griffin or Tevian Jones, and those people in your grade deciding to transfer? Um, definitely heartbroken at first, to be totally honest. Definitely heartbroken at first because uh, those are my guys. Those are like my brothers. Uh, we lived in the same dorm uh, for uh, when we first came in summer and then for a whole freshman year. And Alan was my roommate for uh, for a whole year now, and we have a lot of memories. Definitely, I was so broken at first. Um, at the same time, I realized always people make decisions for best for themselves, and uh, they put themselves first. And uh, that's not a wrong thing, uh, wrong thing to do from them, you know. And uh, they decided to make those decisions, and I really, really just hope, really the best of luck to both of them, and I hope they end up in the situation they they will have the most success, not only personally but as a team. And uh, I just wish the best of luck to them. I love them. They're my brothers. I will be supporting them still, whatever they're going to be at. And uh, I will definitely keep in touch with them. And I'll tell you, I uh, definitely was heartbroken. I'm still heartbroken a little bit, but uh, it is what it is. And, Georgie, another follow-up on that. If Io decides to go to the NBA, you would be the last person remaining from your recruiting class. Does that show anything about your loyalty or anything like that? Um, I mean, it's not a personal thing. It's not about me at this point. You know, it's uh, a lot of things that came to the other players that came with me in this class, you know, started from Tom McCain or whatever, and to those guys that transfer now, Allen and Tim. And uh, it's uh, it really, to be honest, it has nothing to do with me. It's all personal things that they have. And as you mentioned, Aya would be the same, that he will, he almost left uh, to go to the NBA last year, and he didn't. And we don't know still his decision right now. And if he leaves, I really the same same to him. I just wish him best of luck. And um, that would not really do a lot. I mean, it has nothing to do really with me, to be honest, in that way. So. Yeah. Hey, Georgie, it's Derek Piper, hey, Atlanta Inquirer. With your time to think now, how do you find yourself looking back on the season, the way it ended with no NCAA tournament, and how as a team did you go about processing that news and just the reality of the season being over? Um, I mean, a lot of, <laughs> to be honest, um, as I, I will repeat this, um, I'm really heartbroken, to be honest. I'm heartbroken not only for the guys that transferred, but also that we didn't make, the tournament, you know, I mean, we did make it, but it just never happened. And uh, we put in so, so much work in my, not just one, my past two years, not just one year, but this past two years, um group of guys have been really, really, really working to achieve uh, something like going to the tournament. And we felt like we was not the team that just goes to the tournament just to play one game, you know, and uh, we felt like, and we still feel like we have the talent and we have the coach and staff and, um, everything to make a deep run. And it's just really, really heartbreaking, to be honest. I'm so heartbroken, especially for the seniors that I know will have no no more chance to experience that. I'm super close to those guys, Kipper, Dre, Samson, Tyler, all those guys, and I'm just really heartbroken for them. And it's just really a bad thing. But at the same time, me thinking all that through, um, I realize it's way, way, way bigger than a game of basketball and all the work that we have put in, put, put in and the tournament and everything, this issue is so much bigger. It impacts the whole entire world. So I uh, have understanding of that as well. 
All right. Well, that sounds like that'll wrap it up. Georgie, really appreciate your time and joining on with these guys and, and giving them an update on how you're doing and how everything's been for the team since the season ended. It was very, very nice of you to spend this much time with them. We really appreciate it. Um, one more thing. I just have a big shout out to all the nurses and doctors who are fighting this as well um, because they're putting their uh, themselves at the risk uh, throughout the whole entire world, not only in the United States, but also uh, all over the world. All oh, shout out to all the nurses and uh, all the doctors that are uh, putting their lives um, at the risk for to to help to help us. So yeah, thank you so much. Great, thank you very much. Well said. Thank you everyone for joining us today, and this concludes the call. Thank you.